All right, it is 9:24 a.m. on Thursday, August the 26th, and the main watch list I don't think changed very much if it did compared to yesterday. And um, PBYA could be morning panic bounce play. Let's not screw this one up. You know, I'd rather at this point I'd rather lose money than to miss a setup. You know, if it just happens to not turn around and it breaks below a risk level and I have to cut losses quickly, then just missing it over something dumb TSOI could be a morning panic bounce play but you know to be honest maybe maybe if it looks super clean I'll consider it but this thing does not trade with much volume so you know with all that in mind I probably won't consider it because again it just you know the, the volume is just not really there but it could all of a sudden look clean I've seen that happen before NSAV I'll just watch it I don't really want to trade this one. It's probably the one most likely to do a morning panic bounce play. I'm just going to watch it. It could do it. It's just there on the watch list. RGBP, morning panic bounce play for sure. OZSC, I'd like to see this thing continue. That's all I got for right now. All right, it is 9.57, and I had two trades. One was a partial fill. I entered an order, and then I just kind of exit it but I still had a position I wasn't really motivated to hold on to it because um, I'm still pretty new with this type of setup but this was a morning spike yesterday it was up I think 40 50 percent and I thought okay could it do something like that today it had a gap up so there was some risk into that because it had a gap up that maybe most of the move it could do in the morning is already taken but I did get executed at 9 30 I right about yeah 9 30 this candle right at the market open actually near um the end of the first minutes and i was in right here at 779 i didn't get my full position so again this was a partial position and i sold at 793 which was right here at this candle just you know right here it did get as high as 80 um one yeah 81 five but that was it that was a morning spike it just seemed very sketchy i did profit just a tiny bit it doesn't trade with that much range i mean this looks massive right i mean yeah i guess 75 to 83 isn't that bad honestly but then i had another trade here this one did not work out and that's fine this one was um tptw this was like a dip towards vwap and my setup was somewhere around here i got in at 9:45 right here just thinking okay maybe it's trying to hold this VWAP level and then I saw that 946 at 555 when it just started to look bad and it downtrended I, I gave it an exception that okay it broke VWAP a little and it came back but when it did it again that's when I said alright I need to get out of the setup and that's why I got out there um, I lost 13 there that was not the best percent loss but dip towards VWAPs could be like that where you know it's kind of hard to quite frankly you know sell right then and there and then this one where I traded a smaller position I was profitable not the biggest percent gain either these none of these are morning panic bounce plays so they're not really set up I'm too interested in I had um, a large convention I didn't pull the trigger with NSAV for the three ticker rule I was pretty close to doing it but I didn't and I'll tell you why so this thing started to look like it was having a tsunami type panic so I did see the turnaround here but again I've time and time again I've missed the bottom you know because I just don't get my order filled because it's just you know it's when all the momentum switches from selling to buying and on top of that you know sometimes oh is this the bottom like oh could this have been the bottom and then it breaks lower and then it breaks lower so again that's not what I'm going for but this was a three ticker rule one green candle two green candle three green candles the problem was is that because it was trading with so much range I thought okay you know this is a third green candle but then it spiked so much it got to 49 and it opened at 46 and so when it got to right here where in theory I would have to get in the trade I don't want to risk this freaking four six seven. That's a lot of risk. I don't want to risk this. That's like roughly five percent. I don't want to risk five percent. That seems a bit too excessive. And then I thought later, when it was about too late, you know, I looked right here and I said, "Oh look, four eighty one was a breakout." 
you know maybe I can get in this ticker right here or this one before it broke out of the range maybe I can get in and risk 481 because that was the initial breakout level at least what I had here let me get a bigger chart for 481 I'm not gonna miss a morning panic with this I thought the breakout was give or take this 481 level 48 and that's that could have been that could have been something that I could have done and I was trying to go large I was trying to go like at the time it was like a nineteen hundred dollar position that would have been super profitable I don't mind that I missed it for this reason because I was going for you know this setup and I just didn't want to risk five percent on the almost a two thousand dollar position that just seems a bit too excessive but had I have maybe realized sooner that I could have risked 481, which would have been fine to me being at 485 or 487, right? Or where it closed right at 488, and then I'm risking 481. That doesn't seem so bad anymore. I'm not risking 5%. That seems a lot better. And I probably would have taken the trade and I would have been profitable here. But this was a good lesson, you know, to just remember or support resistant levels. You know, it did panic below it, and I guess that's why it caused this tsunami type panic the tsunami type price action the three ticker rule would have been super profitable here it did get as high as 53.5 i would have probably if i had the balls i would have sold at you know um, right at vwap or right under it because that's always the the goal there so i just have to keep getting better but that was a good um just uh just a something good that i noticed and hopefully that can apply on on the trade in the future TSOI, I was looking at this for a morning panic bounce play, but the price action was all sketchy. The volume is just not there for this one. And it did get to one from this 965, but then it kind of dropped to near the lows. That wouldn't have been that bad, honestly, but yeah, just a sketchy one. I'm not going to look at it anymore just because the volume is really bad. Um, PBYA, this one did break out of a range. This one's trading all weird. Mo no morning penny bounce plays. It's honestly for the better. If this thing could put up a nice green day and then have a panic tomorrow, that wouldn't be bad. NSAV, I might watch this if it does like a higher low, a lower low, maybe a double bottom. That could be a potential or an inverse head and shoulders. RGBP, nothing really here that was nice in my opinion this one did not I think I was watching this for a dip towards VWA but this one broke just right under it, it didn't look like it was trying to hold it well ZSC I wouldn't have traded this that would have been kind of weird but it did turn around which is nice and it was fast you can tell it closed here gap up open and then it spikes immediately right in just three candles TPTW nothing i mean it could try to put up an inverse head and shoulders right under vwap i don't really know if i'd be interested in something like that yeah it sucks that the dip towards vwap here didn't work because a lot of these they do work you know ozse was a dip towards vwap i mean it spiked from seven five to eight three and it dips there and then it goes to eight two from this seven nine six level RGBP, this one failed. PBYA, uh, yeah, this one failed too, but I probably wouldn't have considered it because of the way it's trading. NSAV did not do any, you know, spikes to do some kind of setup like that. So, two trades, you know, I'm down just like eight bucks, which is fine. Jeez, that's nothing, you know. Um, Could have been in NSAV again, even if, you know, if there wasn't a risk level, a breakout level, 481, a support level, and this thing would have spiked the way it did right here, I would have been fine because I'm not trying to risk 5%. That just seems a bit too much for me to, you know, push myself and trade the largest position possible. And then, you know, that's that's the one where I have to cut losses. I, I, I didn't want to be a part of that. And one more thing I was thinking because a lot of these do drop towards the risk level I thought about putting the order at like 471 or something like that if it were to drop there eventually but it didn't it just continued the spike so that's nice that's all I got for right now I'll make an update later two trades I don't really regret either of them although TPTW didn't have the best price action but that's all right that that, that was a tiny loss and at least I did push myself to trade all ZSE even if I was a bit scared about it
all right it is 1037 and I just want to do a recap NSAV if it's too gradual I won't really consider it it could turn around here but you know it does look like it's trying to consolidate at this level at the original breakout level so maybe I'll, I might consider it actually but I'm gonna probably if I do trade a smaller size and risk 48s even though it'll probably not be the best trade I mean this thing has a lot of wicks below 48 and that would be kind of hard you know if you cut losses because it does that again and then you know it, it turns back around maybe I could risk like the low of this wick 472 right and then you know if it breaks below that then that could mean something else but I, I don't really know I don't mind missing that PBYA nothing I want to trade here RGBP it could break out of this range that would be nice but it doesn't have to do that I will consider RGBP and SAV a little OZSC maybe if it dips towards VWAP as long as it's not slow and gradual I added this one LCLP this looks like a head and shoulders it did drop but just a little 35 32 I guess that's not bad let's give or take 10 percent you know it wouldn't have that would have been if he topped and bomb ticked it I mean unless you want to count the very top here but that was a head and shoulders I saw I was not you know I don't have a day trading um, account for that can short TPTW this one did work very very nicely the inverse head and shoulder shoulder head shoulder it was sketchy because it was right under VWAP and look at all the price action and had here all the volatility and then it eventually got itself together and went as high as 64 that was actually not so bad at all so yeah I'll look at NSAV probably not um, RGBP maybe if it breaks out of that range OZSC if it does a uh, dip towards VWAP but that's that's really all I got I don't mind if I have a red day today because it was a small red day it wasn't anything like um, that other day not yesterday but the one before and you know in theory I could have traded NSAV for a super profitable move right here again I just didn't want to risk that much and I don't regret it for that reason but it's nice to see that this setup continues to work the three ticker rule I've thought about all right it is 9 26 p.m. and I'm here to call it off and go over the stock so overall today I finished down just like eight dollars and um, I feel really good about it you know I, I learned a lot today I had um, a bunch of experiences I could have been up today as well I could have been up like I don't know maybe a hundred sixty dollars with that attempt well I didn't trade it but you know that in theory set up with NSAV I want to see what these things have done since and you know it's, it's a lot better I am thankful for the opportunity I have you know some frustrations here and there um, but things are just getting better especially compared to yesterday and the day before and you know I just I just have to keep going at it but overall I feel I feel really good OZSE was my first trade and that one was kind of scary because you know I, I placed an order and then I immediately wanted to cancel because I just thought all right maybe this thing isn't gonna really spike that much something just seems off or sketchy with the price action and it did top at 932 I sold at 931 so you know just a one a few minutes later and it's at freaking 75 I mean at 77.9 you know I placed the order right and then I said alright let me cancel it I don't know it just feels sketchy and I was in at 779 you can barely tell now but you know I was in there and then I saw that 793 which was a bit higher had I have had more convention maybe um, I would have sold a higher but um, I canceled it then and there it did drop I would not have really traded this random drop and it did get really impressive it did break out of this range here maybe in the future I can get better and be a part of something like this and just uh, just to see 85 to 89 a lot of these stocks they trade in this range in the morning early morning and then it kind of breaks out of it so that was nice and it looks like it did continue to drop maybe inverse head and shoulders here shoulder head shoulder that would have been kind of sketchy look how you know dry the volume looks here it went from 798 to 84 so that's not bad range you know and it did give you another follow-up to sell into if you know for some reason I wasn't able to sell at its top looking at all the topping action that it had of course it's best case scenario but you know I'm really fired up pretty excited um, hopefully I can continue to get better and just keep 
seeing more and more and more experience, a lot more screen time. NSAV, this was the thing where I could have been super profitable getting at this 485 level. It did get as high as 53. I could have been in again. Um, I was going to go for like an $1,800 or I forgot, $1,900 position. Had I have kept in mind the breakout level at 48, that would have given me the convention to buy in this candle and instead of risking um, 5% which was like right here at 468 and I'm in at 48 you know um, I could have just risked really this 480 level just straight up 480 it even had a wick there that would have been super profitable I hope in the future I'm in the same situation on another stock or maybe even this one at some other time period and I can play off a three taker rule setup like this and not have to risk so much um, go a large size and be really profitable again I just didn't want to hear go in a massive size and you know risk five percent I just didn't want to do that sure I could have traded smaller but the idea with trading a larger size on these setups is because it is a third candle the third ring candle I might not continue to go but a lot of these seem to and Sorry about that. That's the alarm. I just it just seems like it's something that you can have a lot of um, convention and so that that was nice there. It didn't really trade that nicely afterwards. I was considering maybe it was going to do like a high or low. I wouldn't have been able to hold through this like Sahara desert, this low liquidity, you know, just very very weak price action. But it did hold four seven six, not ideally four eight, which would have been better. And I guess I did get to four nine, but that 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 was that was looking nasty, you know. It was that that's not a setup, even though it made a move. It wasn't a, like a nice setup. PBYA, really nothing I want to trade here. Maybe tomorrow it can be a morning panic bounce play and trade with more volume. It was a green candle. Maybe I'll just try to consolidate here too. OZSC, again that was a breakout we had there set up in the morning RGBP was kind of similar and that it had a range here and then it breaks out of it right but this one was kind of choppy I've tried trading RGBP before for some kind of a setup breakout like this and it's just you know I haven't been successful with this one it just trades weird but it looks like if they do it later in the day it broke 59.4 it got to 63 not much range so yeah that, that's totally fine and this was the one that didn't work out TPTW it did work out this inverse head and shoulders I don't mind missing it because it was under VWAP and it was kind of weird price action you know but it, it did work here and it was a nice move from I guess give or take 52 I mean I got as high as 64 so that would have been pretty cool but that's alright my trade was here VWAP it didn't hold VWAP clearly I cut losses quickly right and that you know was still a loss because this thing trades with a lot of range you know a larger percent loss than I would like it to be but it does trade with a lot of range a lot of them do work out a lot of them have worked out and I just picked one I didn't you know maybe I shouldn't have pushed myself because it kinda had a wick below VWAP and then it kinda came back to it but I don't regret it too much I tried the best I could and that was just more trading experience and LCLP uh, I mean I guess the inverse had a shoulders maybe here shoulder head shoulder or you could have called this the shoulder it even dropped right at the same level as this you know level that was kind of a move it does trade with range which is nice I don't know we'll see if we can get like a second day follow-up or something like that that's all I got for today a lot of you know um, lessons learned I feel really good I'm really pumped and thankful for the opportunity that I'm in right now hopefully I can keep you know trying um like better with all the things i'm learning every day and uh, just just continue to increase my odds of being a consistently profitable trader that's all i got